Hey everybody. Time for Judy Kroll, coronavirus comedy. Um, yeah, I don't know how fun I'm gonna be today. I'll try, but uh, there were some complaints lodged against me once again to my husband, of all people, not to me directly. Oh, I decided that I would get a prop. This is the prop. And also comments and suggestions and we'll get to all that fun stuff. But um, first thing I wanna say is people are dying. People are dying from this virus. Um, things are getting progressively worse. And I could sit here and I could talk about that but I figure that you could see enough of that on, on the news. I don't want to sound insensitive. I mean, things are pretty dire right now. But what I do want to do, again, is make you laugh. Um, no, I don't think it's particularly funny what's happening. But I just, like I said, I'm not good enough to entertain you with my guitar. I'm not good enough to entertain you with my singing. What I am good enough possibly to do is make you laugh for a little bit. And again, if you don't like it, don't turn it on. So yeah, so, uh, oh my goodness. Such a conundrum, such a conundrum. Like people on Facebook, they're just starting to get, oh, also I should say I had some advice. Number one, I have to look into the uh, camera. And, and number two, I have to stop saying, you know, which, is going to be a tough one. So let's try. Um, so yeah, Facebook. Facebook's become a war zone lately. I don't know what it is. People are just having too much time on their hands. Besides people arguing about politics, they're arguing just in general. I mean, defriending is going on left and right and blocking. And so I had to block my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law. Um, the reason was my sister-in-law, who, who usually doesn't have very many nice things to say about me, decided again to call my husband and complain. So she says, do you know that the comedy that Judy is presenting is very offensive and I've gotten four texts that complained about it? So this is just one of many times she's had an issue with me. So he said, well, you know, don't watch it or just as many people like it as don't. So their problem was, I'm going to be quite honest, is they kept saying, people are dying. People are dying. I know people are dying. It freaking sucks, but I can't do anything about that. Whether I sit here and do comedy, you know, I'm not going to volunteer in a hospital. I don't know what they want. People are dying. I understand that. I'm trying to give you a little break, okay, from that because we are all in this together. How dare I mention my trip that got canceled to go to Israel? How dare I mention that my nails need to get done or my hair needs to get colored? Like, who am I hurting by that? Can I be upset about that and people dying at the same time? So I think she's just off a rocker and everyone's losing her patience. Um, did I say people are dying? People are dying. Um, but my gift, like I said, I don't sing and I don't dance. Well, I do if I'm drunk <laughs> and the music is good and I don't play guitar very well. So all I'm capable of really doing, I've been told my whole life that my gift is being funny. So, Comedy, let me explain to you, is an embellishment. Um, means that not necessarily what happened that I say happened, happened. It's kind of exaggerated just to make it a little more. But most of what I say has truly happened in some respect. So, you know, no, I'm just kidding. So I was talking that I had a flood the other day and how I had to put that in perspective because people are dying, okay? So, um, you know, I'm not good in a crisis. I wouldn't be good when the airplane or if the airplane, God forbid, was going down. So when I'm, uh, you know, you're boarded and you're sitting in your seat and you're waiting to take off or you're starting to take off and the stewardess comes by with the whole spiel about what to do should the plane go down, I don't even listen. 
And the reason is because I damn well know if the plane were going to go down, I would not be calm enough to use my seat as a flotation device or put my oxygen mask on. I'd be screaming and hysterical at the top of my lungs because I'm not good in a crisis. So I don't bother paying attention because I know if we go down, I am not gonna remember any of the things that they're talking about. I'm just going to be screaming, all right? So now I also would like to discuss menopause. No segue again. I'm going through it. I'm 53 years old, probably been going through it <laughs> longer than what I got tested for. And I'm having these hot flashes as you all can relate to. And I'm thinking, I got the coronavirus. Well, either that or I have menopause. Um, I'm forgetful, gain weight. I'd love to blame it on that. Um, I'm impulsive and I'm unfiltered and it's menopause. It's an easy blame. So, you know, and I put on all this weight and uh, when I was going to the gym when they were open, uh, I came out with this really great idea um, that they should have a thin section and a fat section because when I go to the gym and I want to work out or pretend I'm working out so forth, I see these people and they're skinny bitches and they know what they're doing and they use every machine and, and I don't even know why they're there. And it makes me feel bad because I don't have as much stamina and I'm heavy. So what I think they should do would be a great idea to have a thin section separated off by a fat section. And that way, when I see these skinny women working out, I don't have to feel so bad about myself. Now I got the idea from an old store called Fashion Bug. And it was very interesting because it was clearly delineated which side of the store, one side was plus, which meant 16 and up, and the other side was regular, I guess, normal, 12 and under. And the average size woman in this country is a size 12, by the way, Victoria's Secret. So I would go in and literally put, as far as I could stretch, you can't see me, one like straddle of the one side versus the other. And you know, you never wanted to be on the 16 side, but that's how I got the idea for this gym. And then like I have other ideas about only having a fat person gym and you have to weigh X amount in order to use it. Wouldn't that be cool? And then when you graduate, you get to go to the thin person gym. Um, so also wanted to talk, so I'm gonna find something not offensive. Um, you know, I wanted to um, talk about the old times. So the old times when I was growing up, basically we had things we could play with that were very easy to operate, required no battery. Um, if you remember, it's the old fashioned slinky. And I'm having a tough time because my sister-in-law and brother-in-law made mincemeat out of me. By the way, have I reminded you, people are dying. How dare I complain about my hair, my nails, my canceled trip to Israel? What the fuck is wrong with you guys? It's comedy, everybody's going through it. It's our time on the edge, okay? Um, I'm back to that. So we used to play with slinkies, they were simple toys. And we used to eat Chef Boy RD. I don't know why I find that funny, but now, God forbid, you would give some kid something from a can. And uh, my mom, she would say, I would beg her for a ride home from a girlfriend's house because you walk everywhere. But, you know, I was tired and she was like, if you could walk there, you can walk home. So, um, yeah, we would never do that to our kids today. Um, and, you know, people are dying. Oh, my God. It's horrific. How dare I? And so my sister-in-law, she was like, well, I got four texts of friends complaining. How dare she? Here's a suggestion, and I'm like kind of annoyed. Turn it off. Don't watch it. This woman has been after me my entire life. I can never do anything right. I don't know if you guys, any of you have a in-law, but for some reason, once you put that after a name, it's never good. Mother-in-law. <laughs> I mean, brother-in-law. But I think... The worst of them all is sister-in-law. And to be truth be told, I'm sure she's a very nice person deep down. <laughs> just not to me. And we just don't gel together. We're oil and water. So, um, yeah. I want to remind you, <laughs> this is going to be, I'm just rambling on, trying not to say, you know. P.
people are dying. And if you laugh and take any escape at all from that, you should be ashamed. Signing off, Judy Kroll.